What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, your home for the 2020 World Series champion, Los Angeles Dodgers. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined by Daniel Starkin. It is game day, game five, winner take all National League Divisional Series against the San Francisco Giants. And if you woke up thinking today was going to be a calm, cool, collected day until 6 p.m. tonight, well, I have news for you. The Dodgers threw a curveball, and it wasn't a Julio Urias curveball. It was Corey Knebel announced as the starter tonight. Now, the headline, I'll just get out in front. Julio is going to pitch. He will pitch more innings than hopefully anybody else that the Dodgers throw out there tonight. But Corey Knebel will be an opener in Game 5. Daniel, before we get into this, I want to know just your reaction in real time to seeing the tweet from the Dodgers account. I mean, probably just like everyone else, like I was shocked. I mean, even like we'll get into the the reasons and the logic behind it. But regardless of all that, like I don't think anyone woke up this morning expecting this to be the case. Right. Like all the talk the last few days has been that Julio's starting this game and and which made sense. He's on normal rest like the the expectation is he could give a full normal workload tonight and and this isn't like this is something the Dodgers have done before but it's not something they do on a regular basis so with with the season on the line in a must-win yeah. game for them to do it it was it was very surprising yeah game two Julio Arias five innings pitched three hits one earned run one walk five strikeouts pitched really well got the win um, obviously had an unbelievable regular season 20 and three record with a sub three ERA 2.96 almost 200 strikeouts a whip of 1.02 so it's weird because it might make sense if you're like, oh, well, it is Julio, but you forget that Julio is one of the best 10 pitchers in the National League this year by far, probably a little bit higher up that list. And so the argument in favor of this would be the Giants lineup. And in game two, the Giants put five straight right-handed batters at the top of their lineup to face off against the left-handed Urias. And I think the justification would be a couple things. One, the Giants haven't seen a ton of Knebel. He pitched in game two. And that's the only time they've seen him except for one regular season appearance. Knebel has been open, been an opener four times this year, and we can get into some of those numbers as well. Is there anything I'm missing? Like, is that if, if you were to try and defend this move, and I don't know where you stand, if you're in favor of this mm -hmm. or against it, but if you were arguing in favor of it, is that it? You don't want to see all those righties up at the top. You're going to force guys like Buster Posey either to have to face um, Knebel their first time at bat or move further down the lineup. Is that sort of the argument? Well, yeah, let, let me get into it because I got I got some numbers here. I see people, you know, tweeting like that this doesn't make sense because um, because of roughs. Uh, or I mean, uh, Knebel has slightly reverse splits or Julio has slightly reverse splits or whatever. But like, that's kind of irrelevant here. Like, this isn't about Julio or Knebel for that matter. This is, like you said, this is about the Giants and, and their lineup, which is very, very platoon heavy. Um, and, and I got some numbers down here. Like you said, in game two uh, against Julio, they, they stacked, you know, the top of their lineup with righties. Yeah. And, and they had Ruff, Darren Ruff leading off and Austin Slater batting third. Well, if, if you look at the yep. splits, splits for those guys, Austin Slater this season, he had an 894 OPS against lefties. Uh, lefties, which is really good, and a 496 OPS against righties, which is really, really bad. Yeah. And, and then Darren Ruff, he had, he had an OPS of <laughs> – 1007 against uh lefties and 824 against righties so also very drastic and then when you look on the other side of that the guys who the lefties who would be in the lineup again typically against the righty lamont wade jr he had an 860 ops against righties this season and a 389 ops wow. against lefties so again very drastic and the other guys mike yastrzemski 848 ops against righties 513 against lefties so those guys have all very drastic splits. So if you want, if you can, you want to get the best possible possible matchups as that guy as you can. And to me, like, you know, the thought is those guys would be at the top of the lineup if Julio is starting because they want to get three at bats before going to the lefties later in the game against the Dodgers righty relievers. Well, now that Canable is starting, the Giants have yeah. a very interesting decision to make because do you leave those guys at the top of the lineup knowing? that Julio's pr still going to pitch, you know, five, six innings or whatever. Uh, but but if you do that, you get a very bad matchup against Knebel in the first inning. Or the other thought is, do you move those guys down in the lineup and maybe move some lefties up against Knebel, which the Dodgers are fine with because he Knebel was actually better yeah. against lefties yeah. this year. Um, and, and then if you do that, yes, those guys, in theory, like those guys are down in the lineup, so they're still going to face Julio. 
Well, there's no guarantee that Julio's coming in in the second inning, yep. right? Like the Dodgers could either ride Knable for two innings if he looks good, or they could go to another righty, Joe Kelly. like like a Gratterall, Joe Kelly, whatever, to face those guys, and you still have the plus matchups. And then Julio comes in in the third, and then Once he gets the lineup, you know yeah. the top of the order or whatever, and then it's basically the same thing as him coming in the first. So so to me, it, it makes sense. I definitely know a lot of thought went into this, like yeah. Andrew Friedman is a very smart guy like uh, me or you or anyone else (laughs) who criticizes this move. Like we don't have an ounce of the baseball (laughs) knowledge as he does. And he stayed up all night, probably the last two nights doing the numbers, thinking about all this stuff before coming to this decision. So no, you know, it's, it's fair to not agree with it. Like I get the other side, like it's a winner take all game. You're doing something that you haven't done a lot, but just know that there is logic that, (laughs) that went into this. And, and for me, I I, tr- I tend to trust a guy yeah. like Andrew Friedman who knows a lot more about this stuff than myself. Okay, folks, the first thing you need to know, if Daniel comes with numbers, you know he's not messing around, okay? Normally, <laughs> I'm the numbers guy here. Daniel's bringing it. So I think everything you just said totally makes sense to me. I think it puts the Giants in a bad spot from a lineup position of not knowing what the Dodgers are going to do. They have to make some tough decisions. It's kind of like you've now served the ball and the ball is in their court. Okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to put the bad matchup righties in there and just wait until Julio comes? Are you going to put your good matchup righties in there and then have to sub those guys out in the third inning and your whole bench is going to be depleted? Like, are you going to have to burn Wade and Solano and those types, Slater versus whoever? The counter to some of this, I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth just to to give context to all this. Um, All of the right-handed hitters, Ruff was 0 for 3 in game two, which Julio started. Chris Bryant, who batted second, was 0 for 4. In game two, which Julio started. Slater was one for two. He had a double in the first in score. Posey was three for four, so he had a good game. And then Wilmer Flores, the other guy who was a righty at the top of the lineup, batting fifth, he was 0 for three. So I think one argument you can make is, yes, we understand all this, but these guys didn't perform at a good level against Julio. The second thing I think that I would argue is, are the Dodgers getting too cute? Julio Arias has made zero relief appearances this season. (laughs) He has made 32 starts. He has made zero appearances out of the bullpen. I know he did it in the World Series. I know he did it in Game 7 of the NLCS. Um, He has done it before. But again, it's just, is this something we want this guy doing that he hasn't done in 13 or 14 months? Um, A couple arguments on the other side. Corey Knable has made four starts this season, so he at least has some experience as an opener. In those four starts, two of them were um, one and two thirds and two innings. The other two were two innings, so to- or one inning total. So total um, four starts, five and two thirds, six hits, one earned, four four strikeouts. Um, he did go two innings pitched, two hits allowed, no earned runs, two strikeouts against the Giants on September third. So that's the only time the Giants have seen him, plus a perfect inning in game two. So in two appearances against the Giants, which they haven't seen a ton of him, three innings pitched, two hits, no earned runs, four strikeouts. So good stuffers, numbers from Knebel against the Giants. More in Knebel's favor. Last 13 appearances, 14 innings pitched, one earned run, seven hits, three walks, 17 strikeouts. He's been lights out for the last month or so. As you said, lefties are actually worse against him. They hit 140 against him in 43 at-bats with a 233 slugging percentage. Right-handers hit 208 with a 313 slugging percentage in 48 at-bats. So everyone bad against Knable, but lefties actually worse. So if you're looking for the platoon advantage and thinking you could throw a lefty in against Knable, that's actually not going to work either. Urias, if you want to make an argument from his perspective, he allowed a 720 OPS in the first inning of starts this season. We know that's always been kind of the theory with Urias is that he struggles in the first. The ERA hasn't really borne that out. 3.09 ERA in the first 3.09 3.09 ERA in the second, 3.38 ERA in the third, but the OPS is 720 in the first and 581 in the second, 547 in the third. So I think all of that piecing together, you can see it. I think from a strictly logical perspective, I agree with the decision that the Dodgers are making. I think it puts the Giants in an uncomfortable spot. Somebody's The Dodgers got uncomfortable so that the Giants would have to get more uncomfortable. That would be the headline. They have to yeah. figure out, do we want bad matchups in the first to save guys for pinching opportunities later? Do we want good matchups in the first and burn through a bunch of guys early? Do we mess up and go lefties against Knable even though he's good? I think it's just a lot of conversations they have to figure out. The one argument against this is, is this getting too cute? And I saw Blake Williams, who writes for us, he said something which I think is interesting. Do the Dodgers just go to the bullpen until the pitcher spot comes up? 
And then that way Urias won't have to bat until like the fifth or sixth inning. And then you can kind of figure out, because realistically the Dodger bullpen could get you five or six innings. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities that they're only looking for three or four innings out of Julio at this point. So if they, we know they're starting Knable, how would you handle it? Let's say Knable, you know, gives up a hit with one out in the second inning. Do you have Gratterall or Bickford or Kelly, one of those guys right behind him, and then Julio's the third guy out of the pen? How do you handle that? Do you wait till his spot in the lineup comes up, pinch hit, and then put him in? How would you handle that? Last question I'll ask you. Uh, I think you got to wait and see, like, what the Giants lineup looks like. Yeah, like, fair. if they if they put lefties at the top against Knable and then stack the bottom with righties, then I think you go to another righty reliever just because of the splits I just gave that those guys don't hit well against righties. Yeah. Um, and then and then kind of like Blake said, then you can maybe get uh, a pinch hit at bat early for the Dodgers and then go to Julio. Um, or if let's say like if they still stack the bottom of their lineup with lefties, then you could go to Julio right away. I, I, I think you could do either. I, I think one thing I wanted to add is is kind of, you know, I, I get everyone wants to make a big deal out of this because it's like the first inning and it's not a traditional thing to do. Yeah. But like if we're being realistic here, like. I, the Dodgers determined that Corey Knable was going to pitch in this game yep. regardless, yep. right? Like he he did not pitch game four. He's all, like you said, he's only pitched once in this series, so he's fresh, he's ready to go. The Dodgers determined this guy is getting into this game. So in reality, like what is the difference between him pitching the first inning yeah. or him pitching the sixth inning? Like if it goes wrong and he gets rocked in the first inning, well now you have eight eight nine innings to make up for it at least <laughs> whereas if if he gets rocked in the 6th inning or the 7th inning now now you only got a few outs to work with to come back yeah. and and also if he's pitching the 6th or 7th inning then the giants could could tailor the matchups to their liking they could go to their pinch hitters then because there's a lot less game to go they're yeah. not as worried about saving their bench as opposed to the first inning so to me i think while it's obviously the main topic of conversation today, like I don't think it's a huge difference. Out, like we're just not used to seeing it. That's why everyone's kind of so surprised. But I think you know logically it makes a lot of sense. I, I think you know whether the Dodgers are going to win or lose this game won't come down to this decision. Yeah. Like hopefully at least. Like yeah. I still think the offense is going to have to score runs no matter what. Yeah. Like that's something we haven't talked about. Like we're only talking about the pitching side of things, but the Dodgers are going to have to score runs to win today. And they're going to have to get innings out of Julio, whether that's the first through fifth inning or the second through sixth or third through seventh. Like regardless, he's still going to pitch the same amount. Like you said, they could even go shorter with him if they want, just because of how, you know, their bullpen is fresh and ready to go. So I think, how how much Julio throws will obviously come down to how he looks. Like if he's yeah. out there dealing, they're probably not going to take him out. If he doesn't look too great, then they're going to go to the bullpen quick. But I just think at the end of the day, like this isn't largely different. Like when you actually yeah. go down to the nitty gritty of it, it's just something we're not used to. So a lot of people are obviously going to question it. And and I get it. Like it's a winner take all game. And yeah. this is something we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. I, I think it ultimately, the only thing that I would ask is how comfortable Julio is coming out of the bullpen and not getting the first pitch and getting his normal routine and warm up. Because obviously clearly there is some um, confusion about at what point he comes into this game. Now, maybe they've already told him the third inning is yours and we're just going right. to get which would be my guess, that they said, you're going to start the third inning. And if Knable can get us two innings, great. If Knable can get us four outs and Bickford needs to come in for two outs or Gratterall needs to come in for two outs, then so be it. Then you come in and then we'll just play it by ear from there. I mean, because there could be like, hey, I'm going to warn people, like, is it out of the realm of possibilities that Billy McKinney starts in this game as like a defensive <laughs> replacement and just I, I come, hope it comes, is. <laughs> in, comes in as a double switch? Like, I'm just saying, like, if you know yeah. you're going to be pinch hitting for the pitcher and you know it's going to be in the third inning, like, it's possible that they maybe say, you know, now, depending on who they were going to put at first base, maybe they're not worried about defense. But I could just see, like, a defensive player starting the game that they know is going to come out the first time that the pitcher hits. So just be warned. I'm warning people for when the lineup comes out because I could see that happening. But – Bottom line is your thumbs up. You like this. I'm kind of indifferent. Okay. Like I would be fine either way. I, I don't think this decision decides the game. Okay. I, I definitely see the logic on yeah. behind it. So I guess I like it probably more than a lot of people. And just to uh, address what you said about Julio real quick, I think, I think, he's the one guy you can do this yep. with. Like, even though he hasn't come out of the bullpen this year, he's done it yep. in the past and had a lot of success doing it. Like, it's not something that's completely unfamiliar to him. Agreed. Like, you're definitely not doing this with Max Scherzer and Walker Bueller, but but we'll see how it works out. But I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'm 
slightly in favor of it. I think it. I think the logic is sound. I definitely think a lot of thought went into it. Yep. Like it's not like thought. Like Friedman and Roberts just woke up this morning and said, "Let's try this." Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I agree with you. I, I trust the decision makers. I think is the bottom line. I think trying something new in a game that matters so much scares me. Um, but hey, sometimes you got to be a risk taker. You got to step out Let's there. And again, weird. the Dodgers <laughs> got uncomfortable in hopes of making the Giants more uncomfortable. We'll see what happens. So that's Daniel Stark, and my name is Jeff Spiegel. We will be here on this channel, Dodger Blue 1958 on YouTube at 5.30 p.m. for a 30-minute pregame show. Please come, excuse me, please come and join us for that. And then I will be live postgame as well. We've got a special guest who might also be joining our pregame show. So stay tuned for that. That's Daniel. I'm Jeff. Check out DodgerBlue.com for all the latest. DodgerBlue1958 will have the latest on lineups, etc. We appreciate you, and we'll see you soon. The best team holding a trophy high in the air. The Los Angeles Dodgers, champions of the baseball world.